Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is the third part of a three-part series, what turned into be a little series of uh, how to create cards, how to color them, or how to create compositions, I should say, how to color them, and then in this final video, it's how to finish some of your scenes off using some of the tools that I've come to really enjoy employing. Um, in my card making process. That's the alcohol pens. You can use whatever brand you want. Paint pen and gel pens, okay? Really fun for some cool little details that you can do. And my white pigment ink, kind of in a really soft dry brush style application. But these little things like this, like little gel pen marks in a scene can really bring areas of a scene to life, you know. In this case, it's kind of like little splashing little bits of water, you know, suspended in the air and being illuminated by the moonlight. You can see this white gel pen that's, you know, been used to, you know, put some snow on these, uh, bare branches, and that really kind of becomes what the scene is about, as I mentioned in this video. And that was a lot of fun. Just the little highlights up here in the tree sometime can really bring, you know, things like that out from the, uh, um, the background. Some of these little white streaks in the reeds can kind of bring that, uh, give, I don't know, some lighting and dimension into an otherwise, you know, semi-interesting area in terms of uh, the foreground, but, you know, putting these little highlights in there like that makes it a little bit more dimensional. Okay, but things like these alcohol pens are a lot of fun to use because you can just color your, you know, areas of your scene, provided your ink is dry, okay, but you can go in and you can add little details within a scene and not worry about the dye-based ink um, smearing because alcohol and the water based inks don't really mix so you know I kind of go right over my tones with things like these little streaks and textures within wood and it's not going to going to be smearing all that black ink like I said you have to let it dry you know the black ink but things like that um, these are the things that I really enjoy doing within a scene. I enjoy the end whole process, but I really enjoy doing the little detailed touches, like a little glowing star within the scene, you know, with the use of a little bit of pigmenting dabbed over the top of a gel pen mark, you know. I really enjoy, you know, just subtle things, you know, a little pigment ink on the, uh, the wing of that eagle, you know, just to make it look a little bit more dimensional and to reiterate the um, lighting scheme within a scene. It's things like that that I really uh, get a kick out of and uh, I don't know, the way that I do it, I feel that, you know, I'm doing it in a fairly, you know, easy fashion. It, no, when I say it's easy, it's, you know, it takes a little bit of time, not too much time though. But just going in, you know, adding these little highlights to things like branches just entails, you know, doing a little, you know, streak of white ink onto it, you know, so it's really fun. A few little dots within the water. But with, one of the things I do is because I have six scenes here, you'll find I'm kind of reiterating um, kind of the concept of things like light and that's always you know when i'm doing things like highlighting it's adding more in the lighter areas and as you move away from those lit areas you know the space between these little dots becomes greater you know so that kind of makes it look like it's emanating and kind of dissipating you know a little bit like that um, same thing with things like um, stars, you know, what I talk about is, you know, a lot of times I add a little bit more in here in these areas and kind of out in the darkness, maybe I don't have quite so many, you know, little dots. There's a lot of dots kind of in these rocks right here, but then less in the shadows. So it's a little bit of a control um, application of things, but it's not precarious or anything like that. This is closer to the moon few more dots in these trees than there are out here, right? Because these are in the dark. 
All right. So, anyways, I would encourage you to give these a try sometime. For me, I can't tell you how many times I've worked on a scene and I thought it was just okay, you know, through the coloring process. And it happens to me quite often, but, and there's sometimes I just, I'm not really quite sure if a scene's going to work out or not, you know, the way it's kind of coming along. Um, in my coloring or something like that, things are getting a little bit muddy or whatever, but I would say that if it isn't 100% of the time, I can't remember a time when it didn't work out, but just adding a few little dots or something like that into an area and then adding a little of that pigment ink back into the area, it's mostly in the scenes that are become really busy with a ton of things going on. Um, not so much these ones, but um, half-page scenes or whatnot, full-page scenes, but that pigment ink and those little dots <laughs> can really do wonders. It's because things get kind of, and I add a lot of different colors and layers of ink, and uh, those little devices like pigment ink and, you know, a few little white dots can really bring a scene to life and, uh, I don't know, just increase the visual interest of it. So, I don't know, 200%, 300%, like those little, you know, little details on those trees like that. Now, for me, that's what it's all about in this scene. The, really, it's the star of the star of the show, you know, so to speak. You know, is it the, are those highlights like that? I don't know, this one's a more of extreme version, you know. This one, you can't hardly see any dots at all. But I think those little things like that are kind of interesting up in the sky, like so... So anyways, really fun stuff, and I'm always looking for other things to do. I, you know, things like this, I, I should get some kind of like, I don't know, different types of ink or something like that. Like, as I mentioned in the video, like some iridescent um, thing like, you know, run it in, in here are those spray cans, I think. It's like a clear, but it adds kind of a shimmery look to it. You know, something like that over the top of the sky really might be kind of interesting as a, uh, I don't know, an additional effect, you know, something like this, you can do things with gold in here, or something like that, you know, I don't know, even, I should put some gold uh, paint pen in here, or something like that, um, but anyways, that is for another time, or maybe I'll finish it off like that, six scenes, six cards, six opportunities for fun, and I had a lot of fun doing these ones, so if you watch this video, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, if there's any questions on any of these techniques, just you can write it on the comment section, or you can send us an email, and I'll always try to get back with you as soon as I can. All right, thanks for watching, and tuning into the channel. Okay, welcome back to these six scenes. Um, doing these six scenes and stages here, the composition, color edition. Color edition is also um, kind of the lighting scheme of the scene. And now we're going to work on some kind of finishing uh, techniques to all of these. Um, there's some things I could do a little bit more with in terms of, uh, you know, some additional dye-based ink, but I think they look good enough, so I want to kind of layer some additional effects into these scenes, and um, that's something that I really enjoy doing. I like, I'm someone that's into detail, and um, I like adding those details, so we're going to do some things with some alcohol-based pens. Alcohol pens, okay. These ones happen to be the La Plume uh, permanent pens, okay. And I'll be using some kind of lighter tones. Here's some brown tones. Here's some pastel-looking greenish tones. Um, we have a lot of blue scenes here, so we'll use some uh, 
blue uh, tones as well. Kind of lighter values. This one's uh, cyan and an aquamarine. We'll see how those two go. And I mean, I don't know, we can do some other colors as well, but let's just start off with these, okay? Now, for the most part, these scenes look fine to me in terms of um, the different colors that are, are used on them. Are they kind of fleshed in enough? And I would say they are, but for me, um, these pens, I mean, uh, stylus tool sponge tips, you know, you can really, you know, work around a lot of things with them, just depending on how you hold them and the angle you use them at. But, you know, I mean, they're going to have their limitations in terms of the finest of details, okay? Uh, just in terms of, you know, how wide the tip is. Uh, I like to go into these scenes. This is a very light blue. And I like to just kind of get those real detailed areas, you know, areas that I might not want to touch with the um, stylus tool just because it, you know, it's a wider tip, so, um, you know, I, I might not want to get into the smallest of areas, I guess I'm saying. Um, that was the, I think the aquamarine. Yeah, this one is the cyan. And I'm just going in and adding a little bit of shadows underneath certain parts of the uh, image that have shadows on them. Maybe in the rocks as well. I can go in and add a little bit of a deeper shadow. Something like that. It's subtle because I'm working with a very light value of blue, okay? And go in with the, the lighter blue and just kind of blend that one in a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, so not too much. I don't, it's very, very subtle, but um, a little bit more on the uh, structure. A little bit down here in the ways as well, but, but not too much. All right, now while I have this pen, let me just do some additional things. I'll look around. I kind of like that little glowing light, but if I want to add a little bit of a streak in here, I can do that. Um, this is a couple days after I added these colors, so I'm just going right over those reeds, and it's not as if it's kind of blurring the reeds or anything like that, you know, when I go over it down there. If I want to put a little streak in the water, I can too. Uh, you'll add a little bit of shadows underneath some of these eaves on this uh, cabin. Shadows underneath the, uh, the overhang right here. I forgot what these are called here on the roof, sticking out like a couple of those. Like there's a little bit of shadow being cast by the moonlight. Chimney. Put some little textures in the roof. some little details. There's some little areas down here in the grass. Maybe I can add a little some shadows to it. I'm just trying to make things a little bit more dimensional. And I do it in kind of with subtlety or try to. These trees here. Just adding a little bit of tone to them. 
I can make a shadow, maybe being cast by that moon, okay. This tree, kind of go this way. And over here, the moonlight's to the left of that tree, so I can kind of create a shadow going that way. See these rocks down here? Can color them in, have them cast a little bit of a shadow on the moonlight. This rock is over here. I'll just kind of aim the shadow that way. Some additional rocks. You can see the shadows in here. Okay, see that? You can do the same thing for some of these little reeds, these little twiggy branches. I need to write, write down here in the shadows, just kind of, I don't know, making this area come alive a little bit more. Well, it's really not coming alive too much. It, it, it needs more, but um, kind of fleshing it in, you know, it's really getting some additional lighting put to, put uh, introduced into the uh, little details. Okay, this is the uh, cyan, it's a little bit darker. right along the water's edge. I can strengthen some shadows in here, or the shaded side of an object. In this case, it's a rock. Try this uh, darker blue, cobalt blue. to kind of blend the darker um, ink, the darker little details into the scene a little bit more, okay? So something like that. It, to me, this area looks, you know, looks a little bit more kind of fleshed in, you might say. Okay. This one right here, eh, I don't think we need too much on this. Let's add some additional tone to some of these rocks. Make them look a little bit more dimensional or three-dimensional. Some kind of coloring in the base of them, for the most part. Go along the water's edge. Hmm. Let's see. This is a vibe.
violet lavender. So just a little bit more on the water, I think, just to kind of anchor the uh, the objects into the scene a little bit more. All right, let's take a look at this one here. This one is warm tones. Try to do some of these brown kind of uh, values. All right, and where do you use it? I think the uh, the shadows in these rocks are a perfect opportunity. Okay, so I'll just go in and I'll, especially like that little isolated rock has no color, right? It's because I couldn't get in there with a sponge tip. It was a little bit too um, small of an object, and I don't want to take a chance of getting into other um, the other surrounding kind of water area. All right, so it doesn't really blend in at all, does it? I mean, it might kind of mellow out a little bit once it's dry, but that kind of stands out. So what we'll do is we'll blend it in with a lighter value. Okay, in alcohol pens. Okay, that was a sepia. This is a Biscuit. <laughs> Funny name. This is apricot, okay. I'll need this. Ooh, that's this one's coffee. It's pretty dark. Maybe for the darkest of areas, like where the um, the stamp design is is a large field of black. I'll add some of that in there, and then I'll go back to my lighter color and kind of blend the, those areas out a little bit. Okay, that is your alcohol-based pens. Going in and getting into some kind of tighter details, okay? Oops, I forgot about something. Let's go back to these brown pens. I forgot about this um, watermill. This watermill could use a little 
something, okay? Put a few streaks of color into the uh, kind of wood grain. I, I like to go kind of in the direction of the wood grain. Okay. I feel it makes it look, look a little bit more rustic that way. Okay. And dimensional too. Kind of just adding it here and there. Okay, that was the sepia. No, was that the sepia? Yeah, I think it was the sepia. All right, so see that? It's a little bit too much though, isn't it? So we'll go back with, this will be camel, just a lighter tone, and just kind of blend it in a little bit. Let's go to the apricot. A very light hue and value. Okay. Hmm. Add a little in that kind of that brick. Structure. Something like that. Want a little warmth in your water? This is spearmint. Something, any kind of light green, okay? going in adding a little bit of warmth and changing the hue a little bit okay all right so some of these I used a little bit more than others okay some I just it was a little finer things this one had a big area of, oops sorry this one had a big area of just kind of blank nothing so I used it most in here, but in very light, subtle tones. Um, this one, I, there was a lot of opportunity on the rocks. A lot of wood grain in here. This one right here is just kind of more in the shadows. Hopefully making the shadows look a little deeper and giving kind of a, a visual weight to the... Uh, this uh, Lakeside Cove image by kind of really anchoring it down into the scene. All right, now what should we do next? Let's start off with that. Um, lighthouse here. I really like the use of little highlights in my scenes. Okay. This is a white gel pen. Um, this would be really great for the, uh, the bleed proof white too, but um, let's just go in with some gel pen for right now, okay? Now see this area right here. Um, we have it toned in and it looks okay to me, but see this, I'm going and I'm adding some additional kind of splashes that kind of go back into that area that had ink applied to it, thus kind of 
removing some of the, uh, the little details that were inherent in the design. So I had little splashes in there, but now see I'm going back in and I'm layering some additional little splash marks using this pen here. I'll do the same over here. So this area up here, I mean, it looks okay, but if you have this kind of splashing up into it, it'll kind of bring that area to life a touch. Okay. So yeah, what you have to do is you just have to retain, you know, some of that white of the page, you know, like in here, and what you're saying is, or in some area, and you're saying that that colored light is hitting that, you know, that in this case it's a kind of a splashing, crashing wave. Put some over here. Now here's the trick on this pen, okay? Where there's more light a higher concentration of little dots, okay? So this is the whole trick to this one. See this? It's really light in here, so I can add a lot if I want to. And as it moves away from that wave, I kind of, you know, separate those dots and make them farther apart, right? So it looks like it's kind of emitting from, you know, that area. Higher concentration and uh, kind of a scattering of those uh, splashes. All right. Same thing over here. There's a little bit of light down here, so I can use some out there if I want to. To me, I feel this scene looks more dimensional now with the use of that, right? Doesn't it kind of make that area come alive a little bit? It's almost like this little specks of illumination, okay? And those are really fun to kind of apply to a scene to introduce it, all right? Now, we don't have splashing waves or something like that in this scene, so what would be a good opportunity for it, okay? We have the strong moonlight here. All right, so let me put a few little highlights on some of these trees. A few more kind of closer to the moon. And by the time it kind of is on the distant part of those trees. Maybe I'll just put a couple little highlights like so. This one right here is fairly close to the moon, right? And it's in a lighter area, so maybe I'll put a few more highlights there. And as it moves into the darkness, just a dot or two, something like that. Okay, you can put some highlights on some of your grasses down here. But over here, it's in the shade, I think, so maybe I won't do too much of that. Okay. So it kind of brings the tree out from the background a little bit. Up close, it looks like dots, but this is what it would look like kind of, you know, at normal viewing distance, I, th I would think. All right, this one, really fun one to do this to, uh, because there's so much texture and 
this type of mark going on up in the sky already. So we introduce this back into some of these areas where the stars disappeared. Okay. You know, because we added in so much tone, so much ink. I'll be spraying these cards too. Uh, some of these cards dried in kind of like a dull sheen. And that will just bring that back with the use of some uh, spray sealants. Kind of vary the uh, distance between some of your um, stars. Don't have everything just like you know, a quarter inch apart. You can kind of cluster some here and there, and I think that looks a little bit more natural. Now, on these rocks down here, if we want to make them look a little bit more dimensional, as in three-dimensional, we put a few little highlights on them, like the top side is capturing, reflecting, rather, some of that light from above, okay? See, we don't want to put too much of this in areas that it's dark, because you wouldn't have so much light reflecting off an area that's dark, so couple little highlights in the darker areas, okay, and more in lighter areas like right in here, so is that kind of moonlight being reflected off the uh, rocks there? Or not moonlight, but starlight I guess. You can add a little specular light down here in the water on the surface. little sparkles in the water. Okay. Oh. This is a violet colored scene. So we have this blue and violet Sharpie paint pen. Sometimes white is a little bit too stark, so we can also do stay within our color scheme, I think, and add in a few of these highlights. Okay. some of it on the rocks where maybe it's a little bit too dark to add white you can always add kind of a blue highlight or a colored highlight okay I need to get a few more colors of these I, I really love these pens speaking of that we'll try a peach colored highlight on some of these rocks.
maybe down in the water here where it's quite light, right? And some splashing water with the use of the white gel pen. snowy scene, right? Let's see what we can do here. Let's add... It's quite light down there because it is already kind of snowy looking. Adding some texture in the form of <laughs> kind of some snowy covered rocks here. This area, a little edge here next to the, uh, the bank. I can add quite a bit of this white gel and it'll look, you know, natural next to the uh, snow. Okay, let's put a little bit of um, snow on some of these branches, maybe. some on these uh, little twigs in the uh, scene as well. Kind of changing the uh, spirit of the scene a little bit, isn't it? By having that on there. See where the branch kind of meets the uh, trunk? That's where I'm putting, putting a little bit of uh, this gel, for the most part. It's like snow kind of gets, kind of collects right there, right at the uh, that junction.
I like what I see on those trees. I think that makes it kind of a lot of fun, or a lot more fun than it was. Not that it wasn't fun at all, but this just looks, I think it looks more complete, don't you think? Interesting to me. I don't think I've done that much before on something uh, like an object, you know, some of these streaks like that. All right. A little shimmering water down here. want these reeds to stick out a little bit more, you can put a little kind of a little streak onto them or a few little dots. Like that. Same thing with these branches up here. If you want to kind of put you know put a few little highlights on them that could be Kind of interesting to kind of pull them out from the background and to give them some sort of little texture in common with some other areas where there's some texture. All right, so gel pen highlights. Splashing water. stars, you know, little textures in the grass, and splashing waves, okay? Now, let's take a look and do something with some pigment ink. This is a color box, frost white, okay? It's a slow drying pigment ink. If you stamp something out on a piece of paper using this ink, it probably wouldn't dry very quickly, okay? But I'm going to take a lot of this ink off, okay? See that right there? I'm putting this on that pen so I can see how dry it is, okay? This is the one thing that people kind of new to this technique don't do enough of. They don't take enough ink off, okay? And then it becomes a very precarious um, application because there's so much ink that when they tap it down it's leaving like a big blob okay so you just have to take off most of your ink okay to the point where all right let's take a look at this moon right here and try to make it glow a little bit more see that sharp edge around that moon if i just take this and see i'm tapping it a few times and it's just that little smudgy glow okay let me do this once Nothing, okay, on this side. Let's see, with repeated taps, you know, I'm leaving a little bit more ink on the paper, and that's kind of the what you want as far as consistency of ink on here. Now, see that moon? It looks like it's glowing to me a little bit more. 
All right. Now let's take a look at some of these clouds from above. I feel taps. I haven't re-inked this yet. I mean, if you have to ink it up a hundred times before you see anything, you know, you should probably re-ink. But I'm adding this here and there, kind of on the bottom of those billowing clouds, making it look like the um, light is hitting those clouds. Maybe this cloud is glowing a little bit. So I could just add some of that pigment in there and it makes it a little bit softer. This down here might look interesting on that water's edge just to diffuse some of it here and there, making it look like there's a little bit of a fog or something like that, or just giving the moon a little bit of a softer light. See that right there, how I've taken that hard edge of that rock, and I've kind of taken some of that and I've put it on that side of the rock, facing the moon, okay? Let's take a look at this tree here. Let's put a little light into that tree. I'm tapping and tapping and tapping. It's just putting a very light coating on that tree, on the kind of the base of that tree trunk. It looks like it's capturing some light to me. This one over here could use it too, but see this is where we've retained some of this white of the page, okay? For both the uh, highlights and for something like this technique. All right, let's put some of that tree and a little bit of uh, nice soft foggy haze. See that right there at the base of it? It looks like it's capturing some of that light, doesn't it? some up on that horizon. Kind of creating a little bit of a glow in there. How about this tree? Is there anything we can do? Maybe put a little light onto the side of that tree. Facing the light. Don't put too much everywhere though. It's too much, you know. Kind of oscillate it where you get a little bit of diffusion and then solid and a little bit more diffusion if you do that, okay? So keep it dry on here. Okay, so I think that Looks a little bit softer to me. Okay. Uh, the base of a waterfall. If you have that color light, white, you can go into it and create kind of a churning water, kind of misty. hazy, kind of moving water look. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of keeping it in the lighter area, right? Just like the, uh, the white dots. And as I move out, I apply less of it. So there's more in the lighter areas, okay? And less farther away, because you won't see so many like light in the shadows, okay?
Lightning Falls type of thing going on. Hmm. Yeah. Try in the clouds a little bit. Let's see if we can get them looking even softer and more billowy than they are. A little touch here and there. I can put some over the wings of a couple of those birds. Okay, remember, don't put it everywhere. Everywhere is just too much. But that looks okay to me. I don't know, those clouds... I don't know, do those clouds look stamped out to you? You know, they look a little bit more kind of natural in terms of uh, kind of the way that light falls on clouds, you know, I, I think. You know, it's vapor, so you have these kind of elements of, uh, you know, a translucent type of uh, um, not material, but um, I don't know, translucent element. <laughs> All right, I'm putting some down here in the water, too. Okay. Okay, this one I'm not gonna do too much because there's not too much kind of lighting in here. You know, I don't want to have something like really, you know, illuminated, but we can still have a lot of fun, all right? I've kind of switched this side of the uh, swab just to, uh, this side was a little bit smashed down at this point in time. But on some of these stars, what I'll do is I'll try to make them look as though they're, there's a certain glow to them. Hazy glow around some of these. Okay, I can just kind of pick one out. I mean, it doesn't matter which one. And you just dab that down a little bit. So you have a different looking star amongst all these other ones, okay? And again, you know, I don't think it would look good to do it to, to too many of them. I don't know, maybe it would. But something like that. See how these little glowing spheres up in the uh, sky, which is a lot of fun. And you can put a little bit of a uh, haze and mist down here if you want to. I don't know, putting that type of thing, glowing things in a given setting kind of lends itself to kind of more of a kind of a dreamlike appearance I would say yeah it's that kind of hazy light all right you can't see too much of what I did down here but just soften some areas up around here you can see it right here where that Rock is a little bit less defined. Let me make it a little bit more obvious, okay? Something like that. Here. I don't know if that was obvious or not, but I came up into here. You can see that little um, translucent area. Okay. Okay, same moon as that other scene that we just did. Let's go in here. Let me, I think this one will be a little bit more obvious as far as what exactly this can do, okay? Now watch how many taps it takes me. At this point in time, I, I haven't re-inked, but 
Let's see. See, I've tapped it down a few times, and can you see that little difference right there? Actually, I mean, it wouldn't hurt for me to re-ink it this time, but just to sh kind of make a point of uh, going with a drier tap, see, it's like nothing down there, okay? And now, I'm adding more and more. I mean, there certainly is a lot more control over it. The drier this is, it's just that you have to kind of tap more, but see what I mean? I'm getting what I want there in terms of that glowing light now. See that? And this is what it looks like more, you know, from distance. Okay. Let's take a look at some of these uh, branches right here. Okay. See this branch right here? I'll do the same thing that I did with this one. I'll kind of tap a little bit of ink over the top of it. Pigment ink and see how it, that looks like it's capturing some light now. To me, it does, at least. Here. Let's take a look at some of these uh, branches over here, okay? See that? So see, I mean, when I do this, I mean, if I go like this, there's nothing that's going to happen, kind of, that I, you know, that's a big deal. So that's why I'm always working from really light tones and into darker tones with the ink. But when I'm working with this, I'm working very dry, okay? So that's how it's really hard for me to come up with a, you know, a mistake with this. Because like one tap is just, it takes a while to kind of get it to, you know, to the point of where it's doing what I want it to do. But that's for a reason. It's because I want, I'd rather have more control over it that way. So, very dry. And you can see that those trees right now are now capturing that, you know, that nice soft moonlight. You have this soft light on your trees, okay? Let's take a look at it like that. And see this too, if you put a little bit of a highlights on this side, it kind of pushed that, this tree back in the distance a little bit because you have the sharper you know, crisp impression right here, and you have the diffused one back there, too, so visually, I think it's, uh, you know, kind of nice like that. It creates depth where maybe there wasn't too much depth, you know. When I do this, it's kind of creating a little bit more distance, I think, because it isn't a sharp impression of it. Okay. And the crashing waves, again, just like a waterfall or something like that. where you have a lot of uh, this water and mist, you know, being formed from moving water. You see that kind of softer look to it in some areas? And I'll leave it crisp in other areas, okay? So not everywhere. And I have to remind myself of that too when I'm doing this, by the way. Because it's fun to do and I, you know, I can overdo it. Let's bring this little lighthouse to light a little bit, to life a little bit, okay? Make it look like it's glowing a little bit more, so... So that difference like that. Okay. So take a look at this uh, eagle. We have the moonlight in the back, right? Let's put some of this on its wings. How about that? Okay. 
So now we have this eagle that I feel looks a little bit more dimensional than flat. I thought it looked okay, you know, as a silhouette, but I think it looks kind of interesting having a little bit of tone on it. Maybe that was too much. I'll take some of it off like so. Okay. And there you have it. It's hard to stop doing this. It's really a so much fun watching something kind of come into kind of a maybe a greater focus. Okay. Oh, here, right around this hazy moon. Why not make it look even more hazy? Okay. See that little glowing light up there? That's really fun. All right, let's take a look and see what we have here. Um, Okay, so we have a little bit of pen and ink, uh, pen work in this one. Not too much, but for, for the most part, what's going on in these waves is really where it's at, I think. You know, and that's the uh, kind of the action of the scene. You know, things like that are, you know, the subject matters, but for me, the real interesting part is, you know, this area down here. Um, and this one right here, for me, just in terms of lighting, I really like what's going on in these trees right here, where that moon is just kind of, that light is coming in this area right here, and kind of falling on the landscape. That's fun stuff for me. This one, definitely the stars are where it's at. Oh, probably the wood textures in here, but I also like the cloud. And that soft cloud. Waterfalls, it's always in the churning water, right? So we have a lot of uh, the details in that area. Okay. And this one right here. I think the star of the scene is the uh, kind of the snow on the branches. And, uh, I don't know, just kind of a statement those make. I think it's kind of dramatic, you know, the snow on those things like that, reflecting a lot of that moonlight. But, okay, so we have all these scenes here. And one of the things about these is that, uh, I know they look glossy to you and whatever in the camera, but, um, a lot of these kind of dried a little bit more dull than they looked freshly stamped and colored, okay? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get my, uh, my Krylon Crystal Clear. And it's at nighttime right now, so I'm not quite sure how fast these are going to dry, but this is a Krylon Crystal Clear acrylic coating. I'll spray these, and i got to spray them outside, because you never spray that stuff inside. It'll, you know, it's not good to breathe those types of fumes, but um, I'm going to see if I can get the uh, saturation of these to come back with um, a coating of that. And uh, we'll see how everything looks at that time. Okay, I'm back. Ten minutes later. Uh, that Krylon dried pretty fast. This is more like it. I, I, you know, when I sprayed it, um, I can see the saturations of a uh, of value um, coming back. So even if your cards dry kind of in a dull sheen, you know, just spray them and it should bring back the uh, 
the vibrancy and saturation and depth richness into your uh, cards. All right. So anyways, what we have here are six scenes and finished in uh, what's come to be my favorite way of finishing some cards off, and that's doing those little details um, on them using alcohol pens, gel pens, pigment ink. In this, I didn't go into the uh, um, some of the bleed proof white effects that we could have done, but um, let me see if I can get some of this glare off of here. But um, I think the scenes, I don't know, they have a certain um, life, liveliness, or whatever. You know, with the use of things like this gel pen down here, I think that white pen really brings that area to life. It feels like it's moving, you know, we have these splashing, crashing waves. And having that, those little dots kind of, you know, act as kind of like a, oh, kind of a emotion or movement visual device, I think really comes into play down here and uh, it livens up the area. Some areas get dark in here from the use of those tones and those tones aren't bad, but when you add that little speck of, uh, you know, light into those areas, I feel it gives it dimension as well. There's a depth to it. It's saying that these uh, little suspended specks of, you know, water in this case are reflecting that light. And it's just kind of this little thing that's frozen in times in terms of your, your lighting scheme. And then just going into it with uh, pigment ink up here and like on the, the wings of that uh, eagle and haze down here, it just kind of, it oscillates our surface a little bit between, it's more crisp than anything, you know, in terms of the impressions, but it oscillates a little bit between soft and hard, okay, in terms of a, you know, kind of a visual texture. So just little things like that, I think really, you know, kind of provide a nice finishing touch to the, uh, the scene. All right, let's take a look at some other things in here. Let me just go through these quickly. Snow on the branches for me really, really uh, kind of paid off, you know, in terms of uh, kind of the overall look in the scene. It really, for me, became, you know, the scene for me is about those snowy covered branches. So, you know, that white gel pen really comes into play on this one. Not that it doesn't in the other ones, but it really did, you know, between the six scenes, uh, for me, that was the, uh, the key. Um, some additional stars out here on the perimeter. Um, some highlights on these rocks down here. You can see those little dots, and colored dots and whatnot. Um, something like this might be kind of interesting with a little bit of iridescent ink of some sort. I should get some of those and just kind of streak it in here sometime, you know, so that it captures the light and has a little bit of iridescence to it. I'll have to go and find some uh, different inks or something of that sort. This was kind of spray cans too, where you can kind of spray and it gives it kind of this shimmery kind of paint look. If I can find a clear one or something like that and I don't know, I guess I could mask off down here and kind of spray it in the sky right over the top of something like that. You know, it kind of might bring out, you know, an even more of a kind of a interesting dimension. It's little glowing stars like that. See, they're having that soft little light up there, how that really uh, is quite effective in those areas. Oh, something like this. It's... For me, it's kind of those textures in there using the, uh, the alcohol pens, but kind of putting a little bit of pigment up in those clouds makes those clouds seem even softer. They're soft because I've stamped them out in a very light tone of ink, okay? Like a light blue, but just putting those little um, pigment ink touches up there really uh, kind of makes them look even softer. So to me, it, you know, it doesn't look like so much 
like a stamped image, you know, um, when you do those little types of tricks like that. Visually, it really recedes to having that nice and light like that. Okay, and something like this, like I said, the pigment ink on the trees right here, really make them kind of glow and reflect some of the light that's coming from that, you know, that strong moonlight in there. I know something like this cabin can use a little bit more um, details, I think, but I won't do that now. And this one right here, just putting that kind of soft, misty, glowing light down there in that waterfall kind of brings that out. Needs a little, little subject matter in here, like a little deer or something like that in the distance, doesn't it? Something like that. I can go a little bit dark around the perimeter too, but anyways. Uh, the rocks right down here, kind of, uh, I don't know, bring them to life a little bit more with some use of uh, some additional tones, you know? And having variation within the uh, the surface to make it look a little bit more rounded. Okay. All right. So six scenes. How do I stamp a scene? How do I color a scene? In this one, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this. How do I finish a scene? Maybe or I don't know. How can I bring a scene to life or something of that sort? But Anyways, kind of a three-part series here. I wasn't really intending to do that. It, it was just kind of more of an example of how to approach a scene from the compositional standpoint, but I really enjoyed finishing all of these off and uh, through the entire process. So uh, if you've watched these videos, I hope you enjoy them and I hope you enjoyed all the different steps and uh, kind of hopefully uh, in a video like this one kind of giving you a good idea of how to use you know some of these different types of tools um, you know within a scene to further kind of expand on the, uh, the visual uh, kind of uh, vocabulary within a scene in a very fun and uh, easy manner I hope you'd see so, anyways, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning into the channel, and uh, hope you enjoyed it.